By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have something exciting for you, a best of five match with two completely revised decks. We've got a mono red deck full of dragons taking on a mono black deck full of zombies. So it's dragons versus zombies today right here on Timmy Talks. The dragons are being piloted by Yup Vak and I am playing the zombie deck. Now before I go to the deck deck, because I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also go straight to the games if you want to. The easiest way to do that is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. As for here, we are going to continue with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of Yup Vak and his dragons. And here we see the mono red dragons deck of my opponent and it looks pretty sweet. I would love to pilot this. I love big creatures and we see a lot of big creatures in here. We see fire elemental, earth elemental, four sheaven dragons. That's awesome. Four dragon whelps. Also four granite gargoyles. So a lot of flying creatures in here as well. And of course those flying creatures go together really well with the two earthquakes that we see there. So earthquake, of course, wonder at an X for sorcery that deals X damage to each player and each creature without flying. You know, there's an earthquake on the ground. Very, very flavorful. And of course, we also see a lot of direct damage. Four lightning bolts, three fireballs. So that's um, painful earthquake, of course, being direct damage as well. So we've got nine direct damage spells in total. That means that Yup can win later in the game. If he just has enough mana, he can simply cast a huge fireball and win. Remember, I'm playing mono black, so I've got no reverse damage. I've got no counter spell. He can just cast a huge fireball. There's basically nothing I can do about it. I'm actually more afraid of the earthquakes thinking about it because they can wipe out my entire zombie army. Now, there are a couple of cards in this deck that you don't see often. So I would just quickly like to discuss those so that you know what's going on. So we've got the Keldon Warlord, which is two red and two for an Asterix Asterix creature because the power and toughness of this creature depend on the amount of creatures on the board. So if you've got six creatures on the board, it's a six, six. If you only have the Keldon Warlord on the board, it's just a one, one. So this is a pretty cool creature. It used to be quite popular in red. Uh, when when I started playing in, in 95, you don't see it anymore in, in, on any tables, which is kind of unfortunate. I think it's still a cool card to combine with, for example, goblins or kobolds. Um, you know, maybe I should build a deck around Keldon Warlord. Let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do that. Um, we also see a card that you don't see often. That's uh, Yandor's Saddlebags, and uh, it's actually an artifact for two. And it says three and tap, untap a creature. Now, this card is actually pretty useful. I think you don't really see it anymore because of Maze of If. Because Maze of If is also a way to untap your creatures during combat. Because combat has been divided into these different phases. So after damage is dealt, you can use your maze to untap your creature. You, you, you know, back in the day, you couldn't do that. But now you can, right? So that kind of makes gender settleback a little bit obsolete. But I still love the art. I love the fact it's an OG card from Arabian Nights. I like what it does. You know, three tap, untap a creature. It's quite clear. So I love it. Um, looking at the creature base, by the way, looking back at the creature base, there's one other creature I want to discuss, and that is Rock Hydra. Because Rock Hydra is a little bit complex. It's two red and X for a zero zero creature, right? And then put X plus one plus one counters heads on the Hydra. Each point of damage Hydra suffers kills one of the heads unless controller spends red per head. So you can kind of regenerate the, the, the plus one plus one counters. And during your, your upkeep, you can put new heads on it by paying three red. So you can keep growing the heads and you can also uh, regenerate the heads. But that means, let's say you're playing a Rock Hydra as a 5-5 five, five creature. If your opponent could deal one point of damage to the Hydra and you cannot regenerate the head, it's basically going to lose a counter. So it's going to go down to 4-4. Four, four. Right, so the Hydra is very, um, very sensitive. You need to keep enough red open. Now, if you're playing mono red, it's a great creature to 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 play with. So I'm really happy to see it in this brew. Okay, this is the deck of my opponent Yup. Now let's take a look at my deck, the Zombie Army. And here we see my Zombie deck. Now this is a deck that I've been kind of tweaking and changing all the time, but this is the version I'm playing in this matchup. And obviously, what I want to do with the zombie deck is quite simple. Just play out a lot of zombies. Play out um, the zombie master, which is uh, two black and one for two, three creature. 
that gives all the zombies swamp walk and regenerate for one black, right? So if everything has swamp walk, I want my opponent to have swamps and therefore I use evil presence. So I use my evil presence, give my opponent a swamp that makes all my zombies unblockable. I'm gonna attack with that. On top of that, I'm playing with Navanerl's disc because Zombie Master gives all my zombies regeneration. So I can pop the disc, regenerate my army and because I'm playing with Navanerl's discs, I'm also playing with um, Will of the Wisp because it has regeneration. I'm also playing with Scavenger Ghoul, which has been upgraded the creature type from Ghoul to a zombie. So a Scavenger Ghoul can actually get regeneration uh, um, counters on it. It's it's one of these, you know, old school cards. I, I find the wording super interesting and the fact they can get counters that you can then exchange to regenerate it. I just think it's really, really cool. I'm also playing with one Nightmare that's kind of the finisher in the deck. And I'm also playing with Anime Deaths because Anime Deaths go together really well with Nevenerol's disc because you pop the disc, you probably destroy a big creature of your opponent and then you can take that over to your side with an anime debt. So I'm really looking forward to try to get one of those beautiful Sheevan dragons and get that rotting corpse out of the graveyard and just have a zombie dragon on my side of the army. That's actually something that I think you know, I wish Anime Dead would also say this creature is now a zombie in addition to its other types because you are animating it from the grave. So it's literally a zombie, right? That would be so flavorful. But I do understand that at the time in, in, in 94, they, they didn't have that idea yet of where the game uh, would be going. Now, there's one last card I want to discuss before we go to the actual match, and that is Cormus Bell. Cormus Bell is hilarious. It's four mana for an artifact that turns all the swamps into 1-1 one, one black creatures. And it's quite important. It doesn't just turn it into 1-1 one, one creatures, but also 1-1 one, one black creatures. So if you combine that with the uh, bad moons here in the match, that means I'm going to get huge lands. So Cormus Bell is a great way to kind of finish the game. So I hope, fingers crossed, that in one of these five games, I get to do that. I really do, because I want to show it to you. I'm, I'm really excited about the inclusion of Cormus Bell into this deck. Okay, this is my brood. This is my zombie deck. We've looked at the deck of my opponent. So now let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. So I'm on the play there on the right side with my zombie deck, starting with a basic swamp and passing turn to my opponent, Yubvak, who's on mono red dragons. And he's starting with a mountain and a pass. So uh, we're doing very manana manana stuff. Oh, look at me go here. Evil presence on the mountain, turning it into a swamp and then a pass turn. So this is a good start for me, right? If I can now get my zombie masters going and my zombie swamp walk army, it's pretty good. There we see the Jander's Saddlebacks, the card that we discussed in the deck deck. So uh, three and tap, untap target creature, two to cast, card from Arabian Nights originally. Another evil presence, ooh. This is going to get sticky here for my opponent. I actually don't want to play out these many evil presences because remember, I am playing with Nevenerol's disc as well, so I can kind of blow up my own evil presence. But I guess for now, I'm just trying to block the double red. There we see an often troll, so two, two, uh, one red and regenerate for this troll. Pretty annoying creature. So this is swamp number four, tapping all four. Okay, what am I gonna cast here for four? playing a Pestilence, that's quite interesting. Those often trolls are also really good against the zombie deck, by the way, because he can regenerate them when I pop the disc. There's an attack for two, so I'm gonna drop to 18. I need, for example, just a Willow to Wisp to kind of stop the troll. Playing another Swamp. Tapping three here, what am I gonna cast? Okay, there's a zombie master. That's actually pretty good because it's a 2-3 creature. So I can use it to block the often troll and hopefully later in the game I can find some actual zombies. Oh, lightning bolt. Killed the zombie master, which is actually a zombie, by the way, the creature type. But uh, I'm hoping to find more zombies, of course, but it's gone now with the lightning bolt. Another mountain, so Yupa can now cast dragon whelps, earth elementals, fire elementals. I mean, this is going to... This can go wrong very quickly, can get out of hand very quickly. He's attacked me again with the often troll, I'm on 16. Tapping two black here to cast Demonic Tutor. Okay, what am I gonna tutor for? I could go for the Mind Twist, but I don't think I will. I think Mind Twist, by the way, in a black deck is very much on theme. I don't play the card often, but in a black zombie deck, I think it's very much on theme. 
I really wonder what I'm going to look for. It also depends on what I have in hand, of course. Perhaps another zombie master. Going to check my hand again, making sure that I make the right choice here. Really taking my time. I guess I'm a little bit in the tank. Made my choice. And I'm going to shuffle up. And, you know, we're going to find out soon enough if it's the mind twist or not. Because I think if it's anything else, it's probably something that I'm going to play out directly. If it's a twist, maybe I'm going to wait a turn to untap all my mana. So did I do the flavorful thing or the mean thing? That's the question, isn't it? It looks like I'm going to pass and I think I've chosen the mind twist, to be honest. Nightmare is also a great option, by the way. A nightmare is like huge. If I have a swamp, I can play the nightmare. I have a 6-6 six, six flyer. That's like awesome. Flies over the troll. That would be a good option, too. Anyway, first is Jupe's turn. He's attacking me with the Ufton Troll. I'm going to drop to 14. And is he going to pass the turn? Is he going to, or is he going to play something out? I mean, for Jupe, it's also tough because if he taps out too many mana, he knows I can kill the Troll with the Pestilence. So, for example, if he would play out a Sheevan, he would have to tap out completely and then he can just kill his Ufton Troll and his Sheevan, actually, with one go. So, it's it's it's... For you, it's difficult to play against the Pestilence. Tapping four. Play a Nevenrolls disc. Interesting. I wonder what card I picked, to be honest. There we see you using the Jander Settleback, probably just because he can, you know, just for funsies. But I wonder... I don't think I picked the Nevenrolls disc, right? That would be a bad play, because I'm just blowing up my own stuff and... You know, Yoop can easily regenerate the Ufton Troll. Attacking again for two, so I'm going to drop to 12. I'm now really wondering what I looked up. Maybe maybe I had a, a foggy moment and I looked up the Nevernose disc, but I can't imagine, to be honest. It looks like I'm trying to set something up here. Okay, there's the Fire Elemental. So I'm going to untap. Also untap the disc, of course. If I play my cards right right now with the Pestilence, I can actually kill the Often Troll. I'm just passing the turn. That is so weird. I wonder if I have a bigger plan or if I'm just playing this very, very poorly. I mean, both is a possibility. Because I think what I should have done, my line of play would have been just to, to activate the Pestilence once, then he has to regenerate the Often Troll, activate it again, and activate it again. I could have killed the Troll and the Fire Elemental. I mean, I'm not going to pop the disc, right? That would be kind of insane. So I'm going to force him to regenerate the Often Troll. I'm going to pay again, so I'm going to kill the Fire Elemental. The problem here, of course, is that I'm so far behind on life. I'm on 8. He's going to regenerate the Troll again. Fire Elemental is going to die. Because he has to regenerate, he's got to tap the Troll. Because I did, did, did this pre-combat. He's going to untap. And then he can actually attack again. Wow, this is a great use of the um, of the Jandar Saddleback right here by my opponent, Jupe. This is great to see because now I'm going to use Pestilence again, but that means two damage again for me. Look at my life total. I went all the way down to six. I mean, I'm just a little bit surprised about my line of player. I would have... I could have killed the off control last turn and I didn't and then I kind of created the situation for myself where I had to activate the pestilence three times and I couldn't even kill the often troll now I'm going to activate it again he can regenerate I'm going to activate it again now I'm on two I mean that's super low 
I'm playing against red. I'm, I am so going to die against like a bolt or any other form of direct damage that my opponent probably has in hand. I mean, this is really just poor magic from my part, but it's great, of course, to see you being so dominant with the often troll. Yeah, counting his mana. <laughs> I am toast. Or is he going to play out a huge rock hydra? That would be pretty sweet. Yes! I love it, Yuke. Well, well done. So he's playing a 6-6 six, six Rock Hydra purely for the flavor. I love it. And I'm going to untap my swamps. And try to make the best out of it. Of course, I still have the Nevenerals Disc, which I can blow next turn. Oh, I'm going to do it right now. So I'm going to pop the disc. Going to destroy the Saddlebacks, the Hydra, but also going to lose my Evil Presences. They're going to go to the Yard. Then I'm going to tap 6. Are we going to see a Nightmare? There is a Nightmare. So it's 7-7 seven, seven Nightmare. I think I looked up the Nightmare, to be honest, with the Demonic Tutor. And then I probably got stuck on 5 lands or something that I couldn't play it out yet. That's probably what happened. Anyway, I've got my big 7-7 seven, seven Flyer. He's probably going to toast me. Oh, there's a Sheevan. Sheevan versus Nightmare. Classic battle. Love it. And and look at that. He's got two uh, red open to bump the Sheevan to a 7-5. So he can kill my Nightmare. This is really sweet. If I can find a Drain Life, I can drain the Sheevan for 5. Ooh, what am I going to do? Tapping 4 here. There's a Cormus Bell. That is pretty risky. Oh, and a Bad Moon. That is really sweet. Unfortunately, I cannot attack yet because I'm on two. I mean, if Yupna finds an Earthquake or a Fireball or a Lightning Bolt, it's over. But if he doesn't, I can maybe win this game, steal this game next turn because I can attack with all my Swamps that are now 2-2 two -two creatures. And of course, I've got my huge Nightmare that he's probably going to use as a, as a Sheevan to block the Nightmare. But then I still deal... Tons of damage, because I've got 7 lands, that's 14 points of damage. But I'm expecting him just to finish it now. Maybe an Earthquake would be quite funny, an Earthquake of 2, I would lose all my lands and the game. And of course my Nightmare would die as well, because it's got power and toughness equal to the amount of swamps that I have. There's a Fireball. He's probably going to kill the Nightmare, and he wants to kill me with the Sheevan Dragon. Oh, he's going to kill a lot of swamps. And then he's going to attack. Oh. Yeah, Yoop is going really for the flavor here. So what he does is he's destroying three of my swamps. That means that my Nightmare turns into a 4-4 flyer. Then he swings in with the Sheevan, forcing me to block because I'm on two, which is quite nice. I can attack him for eight, but then I die the next turn. And Yoop's still on ten, so that's not an option. Nope, that's it. Oh, I had the Howl from Beyond as well. That's it. That's game number one. So a victory for you, Pierre. And I, I kind of feel that I didn't play my cards right with that with that Pestilence. But, you know, it, it happens. Anyway, one game up for you. Remember, this is a best of five. So we're now going to go to game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So I'm one game down. Best of five. Remember that. So even if I lose this one, I still have a small chance of winning the matchup. And here we see Yoop getting the dice back together. He probably has to... Yeah, there's his deck. Now he's got to draw a, a hand. Seven cards. Let's see if he wants to keep. What we usually do with these games, by the way, is if you have no lands or only lands, you can have a free mulligan. There we see a mountain. So it looks like Yoop is going to keep. And he's passing the turn. Okay, here we go. So mountain and a swamp. There's a swamp for me tapping two here. What am I going to cast for two? Demonic tutor. Okay, that's pretty good. Again, finding a tutor. Very early in the game. Now, because we're playing revised only, I don't have access to, for example, sinkhole, which is a great two drop in, uh, in mono black. I, of course, do have access to a Black Knight, but a Black Knight is not a zombie, so 
I didn't want to play it. You can play Drudge Skeletons, which has regeneration, so that would go well with the theme of the deck. But they're skeletons and not zombies. You've got The Walking Dead in Legends, but that's not been reprinted in, uh, in uh, Revised. I think Walking Dead would probably be my two drop in like a normal old school zombie deck, by the way. Anyway, looked up the card, passing the turn, Yoop playing his second mountain. And I mean, his deck is quite slow, he needs a lot of time. My deck should be a little bit faster. Tapping one black, Soul Ring. Tapping Soul Ring, okay, four mana in total. There's a Scavenger Ghoul. Okay, so this is the 2-2 Scavenger Ghoul. Oh, there's a Lightning Bolt on the Ghoul. The Ghoul is dead so quickly because what happens with the Ghoul is if a creature dies, it actually gets a counter on it and then you can use that counter to regenerate the Scavenger Ghoul. But um, yeah, it's dead. Thank you, Yoop. I was so looking forward to kind of play this, this creature, show you this creature. But uh, it's back to the grave, I guess. And there we see a Granite Gargoyle. Fantastic flavor text on this one. If you don't know the flavor text, go check it out. It's a 2-2 flyer. One red to give it plus O plus 1. Drain life here on the Gargoyle. So that means 2 damage to the Gargoyle. And I'm going to gain 2 life. So I'm going to go up to 22 and a pass turn. So we're kind of killing each other's creatures. That's what's going on right now and playing new ones. There's a, there's a Dragon Whelp. 2-3 Dragon Whelp. And you can pump it for one red gift, plus one, plus O, oh, and you can do that three times, make it a five, three in total. And if you do it more than that, then it actually blows itself up at the end of the turn. And here we see two scave zombies from my part, so that's pretty cool. What I need now is a zombie master to give them regeneration and swamp walk. And you playing out land number five, so you could start casting his earth elementals and fire elementals. Tapping three... Wheel of Fortune, that is really sweet. I love that. I think it's really cool. So we're going to draw a fresh seven. I believe we're playing without sideboards, by the way. Because I think if we would be playing with sideboards, you would probably board out his Shatterstorm. So we are drawing our cards again. There's the attack. I'm going to drop to 18. There is another swamp. I can attack you for four here, which is pretty nice, actually. Two scave zombie hits. Going to put him on 16. Tapping three. Another scave zombies. That is so cool. I almost have a play set of scave zombies. Tapping two black for something else. Oh yeah, there's a bad moon. This is so flavorful. I can now hit him for six. So bad moon gives all the black creatures in play plus one plus one. That is pretty huge. This is what I want to do. And I'm actually a big fan of vanilla creatures. I think it's super old school. So I really enjoy playing with these cave zombies. Also playing a willow to wisp, which can block the dragon whelp. Wow, this is a really good turn for me. Let's see what Yoop can do. I mean, if he's got an Earthquake for three, he can kill all my zombies. That would be pretty brutal. There is... No, he's taking it back, though, to Sheevan. He's playing a Fire Elemental instead. Okay. The Fire Elemental is good enough to kind of stop my zombie army because he's got four toughness. But uh, he also has a Sheevan still in hand. That's kind of scary. Could have decided to play out the Sheevan instead, of course, and the next turn attack with Sheevan and Dragonwell, but he kind of changed his mind. That's an interesting choice that he made there. There is another Swamp. Tapping four for a book. Okay, this book is really, really good right now because I've got a lot of land. So that would just be great during end step to just draw cards, but it looks like I want to play something else out. Tapping three. Are we going to see a Zombie Master? Ooh, even, well, not even better, but this is also cool. Royal Assassin, two black and one. I can tap it to destroy target tapped creature. So this is really tough for Yoop, you know. It's going to be really difficult for him to attack. He first has to take care of the Royal, which is a 2-2 because of the Bad Moon. 
Are we going to see a bolt? Yeah, bolt on the Royal. I know, bolt on the Royal. I can't blame you. This is a problem with old school and all those really cool 1-1 one -one creatures. They're just so easy to kill. Like I've played our giving archaeologist decks and it just doesn't work. They kill those creatures all the time. Ali from Cairo, another really cool creature. Uh, Preacher, there's so many cool 1-1 one -one creatures. They get killed so easily. Timmy, of course, the Tim. Anyway, um, you playing out another creature, Dragon Whelp this time. Dark Ritual, what are we gonna do? Oh, to draw a card, so I'm basically cycling away my Dark Ritual, that's kind of funny. Drawing another card, so I do play with Animate Dead, so I could animate my own Royal, of course, that could be an option. Going through my graveyard, so maybe that's what I'm gonna do. Tapping four to draw another card. I'm still on 18, I'm not, it's not really low. Okay, Zombie Master, do I have an evil presence? I do have an evil presence, sweet! So what's happening right now is my Zombie Master is giving all my scape zombie swamp walk. I'm gonna attack with everything here, that is kinda risky. But I'm doing it, attacking for nine points of damage, putting Yoop on five. So that means that next turn, Yoop has to come up with something. Yes, he can attack me now, but next turn he's dead. So he's got to deal 18 points of damage. What he could also do, of course, is destroy my Zombie Master. So Zombie Master is giving all my Scave Zombies Swamp Walk and Regeneration for one black. So he's attacking with everything here. He can actually deal tons of damage. But I can block one creature at least. So I guess I'm going to block a Dragon Whelp. I think, you know, I can block a Dragon Whelp. Then he can pump up. I can also block the Fire Elemental, of course. I think Fire Elemental is a better choice here because he only has two, four, six, seven mana, so he can deal 11 damage if I block the Fire Elemental. So 11, I would end up on seven. So I think I'm blocking the Fire Elemental here. Or am I blocking one of the Dragon Whelps? I think I'm blocking one of the Dragon Whelps. He's pumping it up fully. So I'm getting nine extra points. I'm on six right now. So that does mean that he's blowing up his own Dragon Whelp. Okay, I guess I'm, I'm lower. I guess I'm on four. I think blocking the Fire Elemental probably would have been the better choice. Okay, so he, he or did I block? It's kind of unclear for me now. Oh, he didn't use all his red mana. Okay, I see. Or is he ch is he changing? It looks like he's kind of changing what he's doing. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, he is dead right now. I think I think what he wants to do. I know Yoop a little bit. He's like, can, can I have a look? What would have happened if I did this play? And then he does the other play to kind of see what would have happened. But it's not what he's actually doing. If you can still follow me, I, basically I won already. He was like, okay, I cannot take all that life from you. So that was kind of a confusing ending to this game number two. But, you know, the bottom line is my zombie army won, right? You saw those beautiful scave zombies, three, three undeads under the bad moon attacking my opponent. So that, that's the way I want this deck to work. So that's really nice to see for me. Game number two is in the books. It's 1-1. One, one. Let's get ready for game number three. Game number three, here we go. So it's 1-1. One, one. Yoop on the play here, starting with a soul ring. Very good start for him. That means second turn, next turn, he could potentially play out a Dragon Whelp. That would be pretty brutal. Turn two, Dragon Whelp. Okay, Dark Ritual into Zombie Master. This is what you want to do in life. This or Escape Zombies turn one. So Zombie Master on the board. Let's see if we're going to see a Lightning Bolt on the Zombie Master. Yeah, Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt. It's really a good card, Lightning Bolt. In case you don't know what it does, one red, instant speed, three damage to any target. It's insane. But the more important thing here is that you missed a land drop. So that means he's uh, chosen a risky path to keep his hand with just one land and a soul ring. 
I'm playing my second swamp and a pass. Okay, there's the often troll. Remember, often troll basically killed me in game number one. So this is really a difficult creature for me to deal with. And uh, tapping three here. Are we going to see another zombie master? No, we're going to see scave zombies. 2-2 two, two, vanilla. But it is a zombie. So if it can get a zombie master online, it can give it swamp walk and regeneration. There's the attack for two. So I'm going to go to 18 here. Again, the troll is attacking and doing business. You here playing a dragon whelp. 2-3 flyer. Playing another Swamp, tapping four. There is a Nevenerals Disc. And a pass. There is an attack with the Dragon Whelp and the Off Control. So he can now deal six points of damage if he pumps the Dragon Whelp. That would mean I would go to 12. But if he does, he cannot regenerate the Off Control. So I think he's going to hit me for five in total. That's what I think. I'm thinking about chump blocking, of course, because of the Nevernoil disc. I could chump block to troll this side, not to. I mean, I, in a way, it makes sense to block because then I'm forcing Yup as well to use an extra, you know, mountain to regenerate. Okay, there's a shatter on the Nevernoil disc. Oh, that is painful. That is painful. Didn't see that one coming. Shatter on Nevenerals Disc. That is a problem. Got five lands. It's not looking good for me here in game number three. Now remember, this is a best of five. So even if I lose this one, I get some more games to play. But uh, this is tough. I, I kind of need a Willow. Okay, I can look up a Willow now, I guess. Using my Demonic Tutor here. Could go for a Drain Life as well. Drain the Whelp next turn. Gain some life in the process. Another Disc could be an option. The problem is I cannot play out the Disc immediately. That's kind of like not ideal. It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank as well. Trying to find out what is the best option here. So pick my card it seems. And three lands still untapped, attacking for two first. Going to put Yoop on 18. Tapping one. Evil Presence. Tapping another one. There is a Willow. So I guess I looked up the Willow to Wisp to kind of stop the bleeding here. I can now block the, uh, the Dragon Whelp with the Willow. Attacking with both, of course. I'm going to block the Whelp, taking two from the Troll. Going to drop to 11. He's going to tap four, cast a book. Oh, that's a problem. That book is going to find him lands, and the lands is going to grant him the victory, probably. Attacking again with the scave zombie is going to put my opponent on 16. I'm on 11, passing the turn. I mean, things are looking bad for me. That's that's clear. Five mana now. You found another land. He's going to attack with everything. I'm going to block the whelp again. So I'm going to take two. Going to drop to nine. Is he going to use the book? It looks like he's going to play something out. Perhaps an earth elemental or a fire elemental. Okay, there's the earth elemental. Four, five. Another problem for me here on the board. There is another swamp. Tap four. Okay, play a Scavenger Ghoul. That's actually not too bad because remember, Scavenger Ghoul gets a counter every turn a creature dies. So what I could do is chump block the Scave Zombie on the Earth Elemental. That would create a counter on Scavenger Ghoul. That means I can block with Scavenger Ghoul the Earth Elemental the following turn. So I get at least get a little bit of value that way. I mean, I'm, I'm still in deep trouble, obviously. Yeah, of course he's going to attack with everything. For a moment there, I thought he wasn't going to attack with the Often Troll. I'm like, why wouldn't you? You know, it makes sense here to go all out. And I'm on nine. I mean, my life total is just... 
getting lower and lower and lower, I guess. Just block the wisp on the whelp and the scape on the earth. Oh, I'm actually not doing that. I'm actually blocking the scape on the off control, it seems. Or not. No, I'm blocking the earth elemental. Okay, that, that's cool. So I'm getting one of those counters. So next turn, I can take that counter off to regenerate it if it dies when I'm trying to jump block the earth elemental. Tapping three. Okay, there's okay another scape zombies. I mean, all these things kind of buy me time. Hopefully, I can draw into, I don't know, a drain life. I guess what I'm really looking for is a Nevernose disc, by the way. The problem, of course, with the disc is it comes to play tap, so that would take another turn. It's tough. One of the options for me here is just to block everything and take no damage this turn. Let's first see what uh, what Yoop can do. He's got six mana now. Remember, he's playing with four Sheevan Dragons in his deck. So, um, okay, Fire Elemental. Also bad news, but not as bad as a Sheevan Dragon. And just beautiful creatures on the board, right? I mean, look at it. Earth Elemental, Fire Elemental, Often Troll, and Dragon Whelp. Really iconic Magic the Gathering creatures. Here's the attack with all the creatures that can attack because of course the fire elemental still has summoning sickness. So I guess I'm gonna block the earth elemental here, perhaps on the scave zombies. I'm gonna regenerate my wisp on the whelp and I'm also gonna block the often troll. So I take no damage, at least that's something. The scave zombies is gonna die again. So that means the counter is gonna be back up on the scavenger ghoul. I mean, there's just too much pressure here from my opponent. I'm playing on borrowed time. That's at least uh, what it feels like here. Untapping. Just the swamp. That's not good. Why do you always find that land on top when you don't need it? And there are so many games where you've got like a full hand and you need that one land and, and you're just not getting it. That's, that's kind of magic for you, isn't it? Passing the turn here. There is a mountain. Yeah, I mean, Yoop really has this game under control. Almost from the get-go, I would say. I mean, I had a pretty nice opening with the Dark Ritual into Zombie Master, but then there was that uh, quick lightning bolt. Yeah, I'm just going to try to block. And that's it, dead. <laughs> I'm dead. So game number three here goes to my opponent, Yoop. Very convincing. Uh, it's kind of scary, Yoop, your deck. It's looking quite strong. Um, let's see if I have a better chance in game number four. Game number four, here we go. So I'm a little bit with my back against the wall in this best of five after losing that previous game. And it looks like my opponent here is shuffling up. So I skipped a little bit of the time here that he's ready to start the game. I believe he took a mulligan. So I guess that's a good start for me, right? That he's going to go down to six. Here we go. There we see London mulligan rules. So he's putting one card on the bottom. But he's on, he's on the draw, though. So it's not too bad. Playing a mountain and a pass turn. Finding a second swamp. Let's see if I can do something. Am I going to play an evil presence here? Yeah, I'm going to play an Evil Presence on the mountain. So that's going to be turned into a Swamp. You know, maybe, I mean, he, he took a mulligan. No, no, he's got enough lands. Okay, I thought maybe he kept like a one land hand or something, but he didn't. There's another mountain and a pass. But he's not doing anything yet. It's um, it's giving me some time here. Playing Escape Zombies, 2-2 Vanilla Creature. There is another Red. There is a Granite Gargoyle, 2-2 Flyer. And you can uh, give it plus O plus one for a red. Gonna attack, of course, offering the trade because he's got no red open to pump the toughness. Of course, he's not gonna take it. Gonna drop to 18. Are we gonna see a zombie master here? No, another scave zombies. And I'm missing my land drop here, but at least I'm putting some pressure on the board. There's another mountain for Yoop. Can he find a dragon whelp, for example? 
or another granite gargoyle. There's another granite gargoyle. They do the trick actually in this situation because um, he's got one red open. Attacking with one, gonna put me on 18, flying over my zombies, untapping here. Remember, if I lose this one, I lose the match. I need to win this game. Tapping three, okay, there's a zombie master attacking with both, wow, that's pretty aggressive. And he's actually letting it go. I am surprised, he's got one red open, right? He could block one, pump it, perhaps I'm missing something. Oh, they got Swamp Walk, of course, because of the Zombie Master. Okay, duh, that's the whole idea of the deck. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So my zombies are now unblockable because they get Swamp Walk from the Zombie Master, and there's that evil presence that I played earlier in the game. Yoop tapping four here. There we see a Fireball, of course, on my Zombie Master. Attacking me. He could attack me for two here as well. Exactly. He's going to put me on 16. Yeah, that is a little bit problematic. I think the direct damage package of my opponent has been really, really good in this matchup thus far. Tapping two. Are we going to see an anime dead? This is brilliant. Anime dead on the zombie master. Now I can attack again for four. Going to put Joop on 10. Okay, so he's kind of, he's not with his back against the wall, but I'm getting there. I've halved his life already, which is pretty sweet. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually in, in trouble here land-wise, right? I've missed like two, three land drops already, but it doesn't matter. Three for me is kind of the magic number, because then I can play out my scave zombies and my zombie masters and my anime deaths. So you here tapping four, five even. Are we going to see an Earth Elemental? Oh, a Rock Hydra. So that Rock Hydra is now a 3-3. Three, three. Attacking for four. I'm going to go to 12. This is tough, though. I mean, I can attack, but then I'm opening myself up for a counterattack. Tapping one, two. Found the land, by the way. So that's pretty good news, I guess. Are we going to see another Zombie Master? Another Zombie Master. That means they give each other Swamp Walk and Regeneration. That is quite good. Going to attack here. I could also attack for five. I think that's the better option, to be honest. Deciding not to do it, though. I think that's a mistake. It's funny when you look back at these games, right? I can, I can kind of see why I did the things I did, but... I just also see so many things that I'm doing where I'm thinking, why am I not just attacking also with the other Zombie Master, for example? Then I could have put my opponent on five. But I guess I want to make sure that one Zombie Master survives or something. I don't really know what my reasoning is here. I think it's just a misplay. There's a Kelden Warlord. Really sweet to see it in action. So it's now a 4-4 four -four because there are four creatures on the board on the side of Yoop in total. And that Kelden Warlord, really nice card. I just wish it had Trample. That would make it a lot more playable. I wonder what he's going to do. I mean, is he going to attack with the Hydra? He is going to attack with the Rock Hydra. Why not? It's kind of like an Alpha Strike here, isn't it? So he's going to attack for 7. I guess I'm going to... I can block the Hydra. Why not? Because I've got one black open to regenerate my Zombie Master. But I'm just taking the damage. I think I'm taking the damage here because my philosophy is I'm not dying. And if I block and regenerate the zombie and he can find a way to kill both of my zombie masters, then I'm going to lose the game. I think that's my, my logic here. And I guess I'm correct here. Untapping it. Changing my mind. Asking if he wants to do something before combat. He does. So he wants to kill the Zombie Master. That is a really good move. He's going to kill it. Okay, interesting. I'm not going to regenerate. Does that mean that I have a Drain Life in hand, perhaps? Putting him on two. Casting a Drain Life. Yep, so the Drain Life is giving me the victory here. Wow. I was so close to total annihilation. But uh, that Drain Life really saved the day for me here. That means it's 2-2, and that means we're going to have an all-decisive game, number 5. 
Game number five, the old deciding game. Who's going to win this match? Dragons or the zombies? Yoop starting out with a basic mountain in a pass turn. And uh, I'm drawing my cards. Looks like I'm keeping my hand, starting with the turn one play. Okay, there is an evil presence turning the mountain of Yoop into a swamp. I've been playing a lot of evil presences, by the way, in this uh, matchup. There is a bad moon. Giving all my black creatures plus one, plus one. Well, all the black creatures. But uh, my opponent, of course, only playing with red. Playing a granite gargoyle, 2-2 two -two flyer. Tapping three here on my side of the board. Playing a scave zombies, which is now a 3-3 three -three because of the bad moon. That makes it a lot better. There is another red, so four lands here. Yoop attacking through the air. I'm going to drop to 18. I'm expecting him to play something out second main. Yep, there's a fireball roasting my zombie, turning it back to the grave. There is another swamp, so I'm going to tap four here. Going to cast a drain life on the granite gargoyle. So I'm going to go back up to 20 again. So we're both on 20. And I've got three cards in hand, it seems, or four cards. It's kind of difficult to see. Passing to turn to my opponent here. He's going to tap five. Ooh, fire elemental. That's bad news. Hopefully I can find some removal or perhaps a willow, for example, to block. There's another swamp. Can I do something or am I just going to take five damage next turn? Remember, fire elemental is a five, four. And then you've got earth elemental who is a four, five. I'm really kind of in the tank here, it seems. I want to find a way to get rid of that fire elemental, but I guess I'm just passing the turn. Maybe I've got a terror in hand. There's the attack. Gonna go to 15. That is bad news for me. What do I have in hand here? Tapping four. Okay, Nevenerals disc. Again, it's not ideal now, and now you can kind of see the problem that part of my deck has, you know, Evil Presence, Bad Moon, those enchantments don't go very well with the Nevenol's Disc. So I have to time them right. But in this case, my opponent is kind of forcing my hand here. I have to probably detonate the Disc. I'm already on 10 after take, taking two hits from the Fire Elemental. Yeah, using the Disc, destroying my own Evil Presence and Bad Moon. Having four mana again now to play something out. Okay, there's an enemy dead. I can actually steal the Fire Elemental now. That's kind of nice. So the Fire Elemental is now a 4-4 because it gets minus 1, minus 0 from the enemy dead. So now I've got a 4-4 Fire Elemental on my side of the table. That's kind of nice. And passing the turn here to my opponent. So there we can see the Fire Elemental. He's going to tap 4. Okay, there's a Dragon Whelp. I'm going to untap. So I've got six. Do I have a nightmare? Would be so sweet right now. So I can attack, offering him the trade. I, that's probably a good decision. Or do I have an answer for the whelp? So I'm going to attack with the four four. I think Yupa's just going to take the damage. Going to go to sixteen. I mean, I'm on ten. Remember, I'm quite low. There's a zombie master tapping two more. There's a fear. Okay, so fear means the creature can only be blocked by artifact creatures or black creatures. Fear is an enchant creature. It is, um, yeah, it's an interesting card, but it's not really going to give me the win. And I think you could just swing for five, put me on five. He's actually going to play something out instead. Earthquake for five. Oh, that is so painful. For four, actually. Earthquake for four, because of course it's one red to cast as well, but it's going to kill all my creatures. And of course, not the creature of you because Dragon Whelp is flying. He's going to fly and he's going to put me on three. Oh, I'm so going to die. I need an answer to this Dragon Whelp. Come on. Come on. Give me a terror. Just one terror. Tapping two. There's a fear. Oh, man. 
why am I playing Fear again? Because it's cool art and it's a, it's a cool card and, and everything, but it, uh, dead. That's it. Congratulations, you, for winning this matchup with your Dragon's deck. Yeah, I think I think the direct damage and all the removal, it's, it's so tough. And I think you were being quite nice not playing any direct damage on my life totals, but... It's just so good against my zombie deck because all my creatures have quite quite a low toughness and that earthquake is killer so but still man we had fun uh you're winning here with three two with your mighty dragons beautiful to see these uh, revised only decks let me know in the comments below if you enjoy these matchups and maybe i can put a few more on the channel for you or maybe you don't also let me know your opinion uh, i care about your opinion and uh, before you go, I first want to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. And I would like to mention that we actually have a Patreon page here on Timmy Talks. And uh, by becoming a Patreon, you can sponsor the show financially. And uh, that's just really, really appreciated by my side, of course, because it helps me keep the channel afloat. So please take a moment to have a look at the Timmy Talks Patreon page. You can find it on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, and there you can find all the information. It already starts with $1 a month. And um, if you support the channel for just that $1, you do get some perks in return. You can join the Timmy Talks Discord server. You can join the Timmy Talks online tournaments, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Somebody can see.